Hi there everyone, we're here at the Royal Society again. I'm joined by Rupert and look at us here, pretty as a picture aren't we, framed. We're not here to talk about us though, we're here to talk about the people in these portraits. We have John Tyndall, very famous scientist, his wife Louisa Tyndall. Mm -hmm. There's a story there as is. to why we have these portraits together. Yeah, things are going to get a bit interesting, but let's talk about John Tyndall first. Because he's a big deal, isn't he, Rupert? He's like a famous guy to do a lot of great science. Yeah, he's one of the great names in 19th century physics. He works on radiant heat. He does a lot about the physics of the atmosphere. And through these physical discoveries, um, we work out the greenhouse effect. Don't have to take our word for it. Let us quickly show you a paper over here. So here's just one of the famous papers written by Tyndall. Presumably this is written in his own hand, I'm guessing. It is, yeah. By John Tyndall, Esquire, FRS. And the title here, on the absorption and radiation of heat in gases and vapours, and on the physical connection of radiation, absorption and conduction. So he was really big on finding out how all these different gases absorbed heat. This is like he's working, you know. He's it is a working document, plenty of crossings out yeah, and changes. Yeah. Fixing things up, make, fixing his mistakes, mm -hmm. checking his spelling. And this was eventually published in our Philosophical Transactions journal. He was also quite into mountains, Tinder, wasn't he? Yeah, he's one of the pioneering alpinists. He was one of the first people to climb the Matterhorn. He was in the first party that climbed the Weisshorn. And he was very interested in glaciers. So I think he did a few trips over there to do some scientific study of glaciation and climb a few mountains while he was there, sort of mixing business and pleasure. I know there are various glaciers and mountains that have been named after him. So if you know the name Tyndall, where you live, it could be because of this guy. So let's go and have another look at him. Now, he was married to Louisa Tyndall. What's mm -hmm. the story here, Rupert? Uh, yeah, he married quite late in life. I think he was about 55 when he got married. Louisa was 25 years younger than him. She was the daughter of an MP. Apparently a very happy marriage in the 1870s. They bought a little chalet together in Switzerland. They had these portraits painted as a sort of wedding gift to themselves, as far as we know. And the portraits came to the Royal Society in the 1970s as a gift, so we haven't actually had them for that long. Okay. But I'm afraid to say this isn't going to be entirely happily ever after because there's a bit of a mishap coming here. What happened, Rupert? There is, yeah. I mean, Tyndall was in declining health anyway. He'd resigned the long-standing position he had at the Royal Institution, Scientific Academy just up the road, where he was their physics lecturer. And he was on quite a cocktail of medicines, um, one of which was uh, magnesia for his indigestion, which he took every other morning. And he took a much stronger medicine called chloral, um, in the evenings um, to help him sleep. I and mean, it's the thing that they used to slip into Mickey Finn's, um, which is the alcoholic coshes that unscrupulous bartenders would give to their clientele so they could whip them into the back room and rob them. Oh, uh, so you know a bit more about this than me by the sounds of it, but I've never tried one myself. Okay, all right. Uh, Mickey then. Finn is um, alcohol plus um, chloral. Okay, um, so magnesia you could take in reasonable quantities. You could take in spoonfuls, yeah, but if you take a spoonful of chloral, you're in trouble, and that's unfortunately what happened to John Tyndall. Louisa was taking his medicines one morning from the bedside cabinet and poured out into a spoon what she thought was a spoonful of magnesia, and he took it, thought, this tastes a bit funny, Louisa, and uh, she immediately realised that she'd poured the medicine from the wrong bottle. And there's an account of this mishap that Rupert's got for us in this book, A Vision of Modern Science by Ursula de Young. Do you want to uh, do the honours for us? This yeah, is... this is the kind of book we have in our modern biography section. We collect biographies of our fellows. Tyndall died on December the 4th, 1893, from an accidental overdose of chloral administered by his devoted wife, Louisa. Realising that she had mistaken the chloral for magnesia, she said to him, John, I have given you chloral. And Tyndall, ever one to look facts in the face, replied, yes, my poor darling, you have killed your John. All the people present at the coroner's inquest were in tears when she read out this story because she broke down and she so obviously made a, a genuine mistake with the medicines. I tell you what, all the time I come to the Royal Society and you walk past these portraits and there's like famous scientists or people I just have no idea who they are, but to suddenly stop and look and know about such a sort of a human tragic story behind yeah. these people that are, you forget, you know, you forget these aren't just paintings. These are humans that had stories and made mistakes and cried and were happy and died. And it's quite something. Indeed. Yeah. And I bring tour groups around this room sometimes and I often let them wander around and you always get a little gasp when they read this caption. It says here, in 1876, John Tyndall married Louisa Hamilton, who became his constant companion. In 1893, she inadvertently gave him an overdose of medicine from which he died. Yes, my poor darling, you have killed your John. And there he is looking across at her. 
it's sort of almost, you know, they're looking into each other's eyes like they will be forever and knowing what happens, it's like, it moves me, Rupert, it moves me. It moves me too, yes. Yeah, the paintings were done obviously several years earlier, but there's a foreshadowing of what's going to happen in there, I think. So at the new Burlington Galleries in 1938, there was a, an answering exhibition, if you like. So this was something uh, on 20th century German art that included everybody, including artists like Lieberman. And it just was effectively saying, this is great stuff. 